I did not know that. I need to. <laughs> So it's Friday and I'm doing one of them jobs that nobody really likes doing, moving a boiler. The reason why one likes doing it is because you have to be extra gentle when taking the boiler out. Normally you can just rip them out, put the new one in, but you have to keep it all intact, make sure you don't break anything, and out when you put it back together, it all works. So let's get to it, let's get the old one out first. Always remember, if you're making a video, press record, because I've just ripped out all that boiler talking to myself, because I press record. But here we go. I'll show you the room we're working in. So, old boiler was on here, and I want it moving onto this back wall. There's all the pipe work. Yeah, lock snacks ready. So, got to tidy all that up, move some electrical wire, gas. The only appliance in the house that's gas is the boiler. So, we can just bring that down and round. I need to do a better job. Right, so. I did not know that. I needed to. <laughs> right, I'll show you in a minute. What I'm going to do is go up on the roof. I'm we'll trying to hold this with the flute. Yeah, let's go up. Check it out. Come on. There we go. There we go. So what I was going to do is drop it through, but I'll be honest with you, I'm a backseat was still ideal, man. I can't remember the last time I fitted a van, and the last time I fitted anything close to the van was a glow worm. That's only because it had a rear flue and it was a compact. Got the flue down. All along. So that's, that's flat roof, garage, so mm. pull that down. I've got plenty to work with there, just to make sure everything fits up there. It's going to need a standard flat roof kit up there. Um, so what I'm going to do is elbow across and onto the new flue. Uh, this gas pipe can go, like I said, there's nothing in the house that's gas apart from the ball that's going here. So that's okay there. Let's, let's get stuff out of the way first. So let's get this wire out of the way, let's get this gas pipe out of the way. That plug, that could do with moving. So, I'm going to move that over to there. It's got plenty of, the wire's got plenty of excess on it, so I'm just turn the power off and just move that over to there. Yeah, let's get everything out of the way, get the wall in. There you go, looking a lot better. A lot better. Nice clear path where we're going now. No electrics have moved over there. So let's get the boiler hung. Probably want to get enough fall on the flue. So we've got our bracket about here. And we've got enough room above here. Yeah, it should, it should work fine. Okay, let's get to it. For the bracket, I think I went a bit too high there, so I'll load it down. Get your smooth level, make sure it's level. I just started off putting the, the middle one in. And you just work your way across. I did mark them, but I realised these holes are that big, you just drill middle of the hole, wash on the screw. So I'm going to get two on the end there, two there, one there. Yeah, that's plenty. Six fixes of that, it ain't going nowhere into a solid brick wall. So get that screwed in and get the boiler hung, I think. Brack it on. Lads up. Let's get this bad boy hanged. Feeling, feeling strong. It's big end. It's violent 836. A little bit heavy. There we go. Get this bad boy on. Relights come with a standoff bracket. You need to put the standoff bracket on.
There you go. All in. Happy days. I forgot to use a standoff bracket, so I went to fit the boiler. And it wouldn't fit. It's not because the it's different bracket by the looks of Um yeah, just put the standoff bracket in and that's in hopefully I've got it at the right height. It does look a little bit tight in the moment, so might have to drop it yet. Yeah. I'll get the elbow on top and uh, we'll have a look. What I'm gonna do is measure from the flue. It's really odd one ended to there. That's what we got there. 368. 368. Um, so that's from the edge of the flue to the edge there. Then add on how much it goes in. I can't work that out. I'll say I don't think so. Yeah, the uh, so it just puts up right to there, though. It? So it's got to be from there. It's got to be 368, yeah. That's got to be bang on 368. So yeah, let's cut that down. I'll put my elbow on and measure that one and get that old bracket out. They do much anyway, so yeah, let's do that. Two lines, so I nearly cut the wrong end. You want to cut measure from the end, it's got that lip on, I'll measure from the wrong end. So, and that's there, it's 370. I've got angle grinder now. When I was an apprentice, all we got was a hacksaw. So this, this saves so much time. That's a DeWalt Extreme Blade, metal blade. Really good, worth its weight in gold days. Paid a little bit more than the normal ones, but that rips through it. So, let's get this cut and always wear goggles. No, you don't look cool wearing them, but trust me, you don't metal filings going straight in your eyes, so. There we go. Looks like I'm getting skinny, do There we go, right. Get this cut. So, I did measure the lip, it sticks out 10 mil, so I'm going to cut the inner 10 mil longer that end. Yeah, let's cut the cut the inner. Now, I don't use the angle grinder for that because it just melts, it makes it look crap, so uh, I normally use a multi tool. So, let's measure that, cut that. Cut down the vertical flue. Let's go up and see. I've done it right. Try and keep you. Keep on camera. Hold up. There we go. Let's uh, flip you around. So I'll so that should straight through. Perfect. There we go. Let's see what that looks like down there. There we go. That's it all in. Now, I did make a mistake on this one. I forgot to take into account the bend. So I had to remeasure and cut it and the lip on the remeasure that it's fitting i said it was 10 mil it's not it's 15 so it's 15 mil lip so that's it all back in it's screwed moved on to that wall you see look how look how much space that's opened up now so yeah looking good i think the next thing i'm going to do is tidy up because i've just been working and throwing stuff everywhere it's no good to working like this so let's get all this tidied up and out of the way Got the work area prepped, got fittings, got clips, 
screws, got the fan on, pipe work, drills, soldering gear. So yeah, okay. let's get some of this pipe work out that's not needed here. I, mean, I don't know what's got a thing out there, so we've got built in front of it. So let's get rid of that. There's just pipes getting everywhere. So I was going to rip out everything that we don't need. Now, if it was up to us on this one, we'd like to rip the whole lot out, start again, repipe basin, repipe to everything, all the pipe works in there, so the toilet opposite and radiator to the other side. So we'd like to rip it all out and start again. But when we call it the customer, obviously it's extra, it's more pipe works, more time. They just want the boiler moving. They don't care what the pipe work looks like because it's in the utility. They're just going to put a lot of the stuff back in there anyway. So we just got to make the best out of a bad situation. Try to neaten this up the best I can. I mean, ideally, I'd want to rip all that out, start again. But customer just wants the boiler piping up. Um, it's actually my mate. He's a builder. There's a few builders that I work for. He just, he ain't going to want to pay extra for me to rip all this out and start again so I'm having to make lemons out of lemonade lemonade out of lemons here that's the saying so I've just got some clips over there to keep back to the wall these flying returns here oh, I've just had to put them like that that's the original one I've just elbowed off there brought it down onto there so it goes and feeds that radiator so flow Flow is going to go here to there, from there to there, just help it across. Um, then we've got the hot. Where's the hot? Hot connects just here. That's going to go straight into the hot. So I'm probably going to cut this back and put a section of copper in. So it's straight in there. Gas is going to run in the back and up to the gas meter there. The cold. I don't want it really going over the hot like that, so and we're going to do that. There's the cold here. Think about that in a minute. And then the return, it's obviously got the filter on. And that can come across to here, I can kick out, come across to there. Yeah, let's start from left to right, see how we get on. So you're just going to see us connect the flow pipe up here. That's the one we started with, it's the easiest one, it's on the left. We just started from left to right. Now you'll see as the video goes on, I do change my mind about the position of certain pipes. So first off, just get the easiest one done, which is the flow. I know exactly where that's going, it's not going to cross over any pipes. So just a good starting point really. Flow's in, you just seen that being done hot. It was coming out of here on a tee and up and in. So I've chopped that out, put a couple of in, and I've connected onto here. And it goes up the back there. Just trim down the speed fit. Gas, I've seen, it's all done. And when I finished putting it in, I thought, well, you got to stand up, keep why don't you just put it up the back? But I was thinking, would have been better up the back, because I've still got to get my cold over there now. It's two pipes instead of one, but never mind. Here's what it is. So the cold, I've got a shut off valve here. And I'm going to have to bring it across. Now I'm going to back down onto the clip here. Last scale reducer in there. Connect onto there. Tee off there. Up. Back in. And shock arrestor. See, get that bend, put an elbow on it. Long scale reducer, and that clip was there. Look at it, right in line. I'm going to want my coal, so I've moved that clip over. And we're just going to get a bit of pipe in there. Yeah, probably I'm going to have to come over this and back in. Shock is going to go on there. Get the whole soldered in. So it's going to solder up all the cold there. You can see I stabbed there for the shock arrestor. Now, on every install, we always fit a shock arrestor, regardless of whether it needs it or not, it's because it future proofs the installation. If you've got plastic composite hydro blocks, 
definitely need a shocker vista. If you've got a water meter, you need one. So I mean, look, if the customer got a water meter in the future, they've got a shocker vista now. So it's in there. So good idea, just fit one on every installation. For the return, I've gone, I kicked it off just to give it a bit more room down, filter down here, teed in there, I'm going to bring it down in the back of here, into there. We've got some pressure in now. The electrics, a few spares obviously here, I'm going to bring the wire around, junction box here, and two leads coming out, one to the nest, to the power, then switch coming back, and five core from here. Straight to the boiler, the boiler's just got one wire going into it. We need some Wago connectors now, these are really good, really strong, really easy to use. It makes the installation really quick. They are a bit pricey, but then worthy. So, we've got a junction box in, I'm going to put that on the wall, then we're going to wire it up to the nest. And once we've got it up to the nest, we can wire it into the boiler 24 volt connection for the switches, then live neutral earth. Power all on, all connected there. Nest on, we've got power. Just going to do a tightness test and uh, pair it all up, see what happens. Boilers on it, all come on. So, for the condense, I just took out the tea that was here, put the tea in over there, and bring it up. We've got two separate connections. We've got one there, that's going to be for the PRV, and this one here is going to be for the condense. So, that is going to come straight down like that into there that should be good so the condense has gone I'm going to get that side bring it straight down I actually made this too long like an idiot glue the audio glue so I've had to put a coupler in yeah the thing is I've run, I've run out of tea so I've had to put that coupler in these things happen so that's got to connect up to there just under here so I'm going to elbow that across and in and do the PLV. That's the condensing. So I put a standoff clip on there. That's just brought it ahead of that part work. Straight into there. So now what I've got to do is the PRV. Just brought it there. So I'll bring it back to the wall down. Uh, stick the hot tun in down here. That should be good to go. All right, that's all done. So I've got the shut off valve there for the cold water filters in. All the electrics, shocker resta, hot ton. Test it all. See there, still got any max so let's get that out. Stick on the boiler. Job done. I don't think I did too bad in the end with what I was given. It was an absolute mess to start with. I wish I could have just ripped it all out and started again. You gotta quote what the customer wants. The customer just wanted the boiler moving and the part work just putting back together. That was it. He don't, he don't really care because he's going to use it as storage anyway. So he's going to chuck everything back in. He, he will really bothered what it looked like. The hot and colds and the flow and returns that you've seen going to them radiators, they're going to be done at a later date because he's having downstairs door it redone and the utility redone. So they can be done at a later date. I wish I could have just got in there, ripped it all out and started again. But it is what it is. I think I've done an okay job for what it was. And that's it. Thanks for watching. And I say, if you like, like what you've seen, give us a subscribe. And for everyone that subscribes so far and watch my videos, thank you. If there's anything you want to see, let me know. Give me a comment, give me a message, and I'll see what I can do for you. Have a good one.